Welcome to the lesson on stable and unstable tachycardia. In this video, we'll discuss sinus tachycardia, atrial flutter, and atrial fibrillation, and irregular narrow complex tachycardia, or AFib. The sinus tachycardia rules include RR intervals to be regular and overall rhythm to be regular. The rate is over 100 beats per minute, but usually less than 170 beats per minute. There is one P wave in front of every QRS and the P waves appear uniform. The PR interval measures between 0.12 and 0.2 seconds in duration and is consistent. The QRS complex measures less than 0.12 seconds. The atrial flutter rules include the atrial rate to be regular. The ventricular rate will usually be regular, but only if the AV node conducts the impulses in a consistent manner. Otherwise, the ventricular rate will be irregular. The atrial rate is normally between 250 to 350. Ventricular rate depends on conduction through the AV node to the ventricles. The P waves will be well defined and have a sawtooth pattern to them. Due to the unusual configuration of P waves, the interval is not measured with atrial flutter. The QRS complex measures less than 0.12 seconds. The atrial fibrillation and irregular narrow complex tachycardia or AFib rules include RR intervals to be irregular. Thereover, overall rhythm is irregularly irregular. The ventricles conduct from different atrial foci, causing the irregularity. The atrial rate usually exceeds 350. If the ventricular rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute, this is known as controlled AFib. If the ventricular rate is more than 100, it's considered AFib with rapid ventricular response, or RVR also known as uncontrolled AFib. Due to the atria firing so rapidly from multiple foci, there's no obvious P waves in the rhythm. The baseline appears chaotic because the atria are fibrillating and therefore no P waves are produced. Because there are no P waves, PR interval cannot be measured. The QRX complex measures less than 0.12 seconds. For adult tachycardia with pulse algorithm, Refer to figure 40 in your corresponding ACLS manual. This concludes our lesson on stable and unstable tachycardia. Next, we'll review acute coronary syndrome.